but it's episode five time. This will be the final episode in the chronicles of our trip through the country of Tanzania. We are now stepping away from our overland safari portion of the trip and making our way to Kilimanjaro National Park, where we'll be making a summit attempt on the mighty and majestic Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is actually comprised of three peaks. There's Kibo Peak with the summit of Uhuru Peak. There is Mwenzi to the east at 16,894 feet and Shira, the smaller of the three peaks to the southwest of the park. We have a nice breakfast at our lodge and begin to make the drive away from Marusha through the town of Moshi into the small village of Marangu on our way to the Kilimanjaro National Park headquarters at the Marangu Gate. We're actually going to go and climb what is deemed to be the Coca-Cola or the easiest route up Mount Kilimanjaro. Now here's the thing, that is an absolute misstatement. What makes the Marangu route the easiest route is the accessibility for the guides. We can drive straight to the gate, straight to the trailhead. There's paved roads, easy headquarters, easy paperwork, that's what makes it easy. The mountain only has a 42% success rate on the Marangu route, however. The reason for this is, much like what we're going to do, we're going to push this route and do it in five days. The route will have A-frame huts each night and nice dining halls for us each night. We've already been camping for 11 days. We're not worried about proving that we're hardy souls. We're going to go ahead and run the risk of possibly being one of the six and ten who don't make it to the top. Sarah and I live at elevation, so we feel confident that the five-day route is going to work for us. The way this route is going to work is we're going to leave the base camp and make our way to 2,700 meters at Mandara Hut. Tomorrow, we're going to go from there to the Harambo Huts, which is basically the elevation of the summit of Breckenridge. From there, we'll make it to the summit base camp of Kibo, and in the middle of the night, push for Huru Peak. It will then be the very next day that we make our way off the mountain, a total of five days. If you do the Lamosho or the Makame route and go in one of the more extended seven or eight day routes, you have about an 80 to 90% chance of success. For us, it's time to spend some time on day one, making our way through the beautiful montane forest up to Mandara Hut. Swing across the, like you just, yeah. Make it from one side to the other, like you're crossing. Like you're conserving energy. Oh, you're not conserving that much energy. That now they have, than now there's evidence for the ranger. Maybe the other one. Oh. And the big one over there running again. They're called blue monkeys? Yeah, black and white. What's their name? They're kind of monkey? Yeah, just black and white colobus monkey. Colob, okay. Yeah. Oh. The walk through the forest is actually quite an experience. If you've ever been doing any mountaineering or any approach climbs, it's really an opportunity to spend some time in a lush jungle, and that's not something that everyone gets to do all the time. The available trekking routes, any that you might choose, do require uh, preparation. Now, none of them require special mountaineering equipment, but they're all strenuous for most people because of the high altitude. Except for this route, all of the trails have some steep sections and rock scramblings that are easily manageable for those with hiking experience. But if you have a fear of heights when you get closer to the summit, you might want to be aware of the fact that you're going to have some altitude to look at. For now, we're going to stop tonight at Mandara Hut at 9,167 feet. This puts us basically, for frame of reference, at the town of Breckenridge. Tomorrow, we're going to climb to the summit of Breckenridge, just for a fairly simple comparison. Tonight, we're going to have good lodging. If it rains, we're going to have a roof over our head. We are excited about doing this, the hut route. We stopped at the Mandara Hut, making our way from Mangrangu Gates. We're at the edge of the heather zone. Tomorrow we'll be in the moorland as we make our way to Harambo and spend the night. Then we'll be in the alpine desert on our way to the summit beyond Kibo Hut and up to the top of Uhuru Peak, which is the highest point on Kibo Peak.
I know when we were planning this route, I was a little bit worried about the fact that we'd be in huts, but I really wanted to make sure that after all of our time on the safari overlanding trip camping, that we had an opportunity for comfort as best we could on these nights. And the fact of the matter is, uh, there's just something really endearing about the hut experience. If you've ever spent any time in Switzerland or in Austria and done any of the hut systems on any peaks, uh, some of the summits that I did when I was uh, right out of college in Switzerland, this just really reminded me of that. The very European, very foreign feel. is a very authentic feel. I promise you, if you do this route, you will not feel like you've cheated. Uh, the great thing about the morning show included uh, the black and white call of us monkeys and some blue monkeys that just really put on a nice trapeze act for us in the trees. <laughs> Monkey. One of the great things about Kilimanjaro is how much it actually stimulates the economy. It actually is a requirement that you must have a set number of porters per climber, you must have a set number of guides or assistant guides per climber, and that there must be a chef and even a steward is included in our climb. So we're really enjoying the fact that we're getting meals prepared for us and uh, getting a great opportunity to experience Kilimanjaro. So this one here that you can barely see because he's hiding is Mawenzi. The two peaks you have Mawenzi and Kibo. Mawenzi is the little brother. And when his fire went out, he asked his big brother to loan him some fire and so his fire came back on again and then when he fell asleep again his big brother became very angry and beat him up and punched him in the face and so the Mowenzi uh, volcanic head is very ugly in comparison and so <clears throat> he hides his face in the clouds all the time but later on he went ahead and beat up his big brother too which is why his big brother is bald. And those are the stories of the two big brother and little brother peaks. Hey, honey, there's Kibo oh, yeah. and Mowenzi. Oh. You see Kibo in the background with the snow? Yeah. yeah. That's not far. You like my fake Af African American accent? Right there. Let's go. Let's go to Kibo today. Kibo hut. So as we make our way now into the moorland zone, take one thing into account. Remember that the Marangu route is supposed to be the easiest and most populated and most like a freeway, and you're going to be tracking all over each other and tripping over. No. Here we are in a very prime time of the year, heading up the Marangu route. Uh, the most we're encountering is going to be a few groups of climbers coming down the mountain that have left the Harambo hut this morning. That's really the only group that we're passing. We actually have caught up with our porters. We're moving so fast uh, this morning and uh, really enjoying this stretch of the climb. This is a very beautiful leg where you're up above the clouds and totally encircled with beautiful skies, a great view of Mwenzi off to your right, and Uhuru at the top of Kibo Peak beckoning you forward up ahead of us. Uh, at this point, uh, we've come several hours into our hike, and it is actually really something where we're going to feel the need for some lunch. And sure enough, as we begin to make the crest of this shoulder, we do find a great little area with some small picnic tables and benches to enjoy a good rest. This is actually a very fun hike for us. This has all of the owners of Panoramic Adventure. My wife, Sarah, uh, is her first time up Kilimanjaro. Our other owner, Paul Masera, however, is a very, very experienced guide who does the mountain dozens of times each year with lots and lots of people. Uh, Paul and I put together Panoramic Adventure on this trip uh, with the opportunity for Sarah, myself, and Paul to really agree that we were excited to take our experience in travel and his 
absolute experience in Tanzania and on Kilimanjaro and build something that all three of us are very excited and passionate about. Well, it's about the early to mid-afternoon by the time that we roll into Harambo Hut. We're making very good time on this hike. And again, because we live at these elevations in Colorado, uh, this actually is an opportunity for us to just get out and do something comparable to the hikes that we do up the 14ers that we have here. Uh, it is something where you'll hear pole pole. That means slowly, slowly. And you definitely do not want to go too fast. You definitely want to go at a pace that's sustainable. Even though we've got good lodging at night and the ability to clean up, this is a location where taking it easy and going it slow really does pay off for the later days. Uh, this little mouse intrigued me as he has stripes like a chipmunk. This is, this is my good friend Ali and he brings me the popcorn. <laughs> Thank you Ali. I am a happy man. It's the best mountain ever. <laughs> Unlimited popcorn. Kilimanjaro, what does it mean in Swahili? Popcorn. Popcorn. Everything about day two has been truly exceptional, and dinner is no exception. I do eat my meal, but I'm rewarded with even more popcorn, which is great. Now, this is an opportunity for you to come and do some great time-lapse photography of the sunsets and the sunrise. But more than that, it's an opportunity for you to do some prep work. If you don't mind having the porter carry your tripod and you want to bring your good camera, make sure that you pay attention to your Star Tracker apps or anything you might have to know when the Milky Way is going to come up, knowing when the moon will have set, and when you have a nice, perfectly dark sky. This is an opportunity for you to get some amazing starscape photography. In the morning, Uhuru Peak is above us on Kibo as we begin our day and get ready to make our day three hike up to the summit base camp of Kibo. Good morning. And this guy over here, his little brother Mawenzi. We are at, uh, not bad so far, 12,608. 73 degrees, 8.30 in the morning. So you noticed before that last little clip that we were waking up at the Harambo at Era and there actually was a nice community of fellow hikers and climbers that were waking up. Some coming up the mountain, some staying at that location for an acclimatization day, and others on their return trip down. Really, the groupings of people that you'll meet each night, whether you're camping or at the huts, is really, really exciting and really fun. You get an opportunity to just meet with so many people who've come from all over the globe to experience this. For our morning on day three, we've actually started on a side trail that most people don't take to pass the zebra rocks as we make our way to Kibo Hut. It's a great opportunity to just kind of take it easy this morning and appreciate some of few and far between flora and fauna that have really fought to be a part of this landscape. As we come over the shoulder, we actually get a chance to see the main trail up ahead of us and down below as we get ready to cross the saddle. This is Kibo Hut. Yeah. Follow up and you'll see something that looks man-made below the... This is where we're going tonight, Kibo Hut. And in the morning, at midnight, we go... <laughs> well, as you begin to make your way up into the Alpine Desert, make your way up over the shoulder onto the plateau and up onto the saddle between Mwenzi and Kibo, you're going to get into some wind. You're going to, at this point, probably begin to layer. But this is a great opportunity also just to take a look. Again, this is the main trail. This is supposedly the most overrun with tourist route, and we're not in a slow time of the year. We do not in any way, shape, or form feel like the Morangu route is a tourist route or something that cannot be enjoyed. We are up in this basically foreign, stark wasteland by ourselves. Certainly we're passing other hikers, but by no means are we feeling like we're in just a massive trudge or pack or line of hikers. We're up here very, very much having a great intimate opportunity to experience that in ourselves. At 14,433 feet, my wife and I, Sarah, we celebrate the highest altitude that she and I had climbed together before. This is actually the summit of Elbert, the highest mountain in Colorado. Sarah and I take a moment to experience this celebration together. 
we don't go too much further in the whipping wind up here at the 14,495 foot mark, but this is an opportunity for to me to commemorate another summit that I made as a young child with my uncle. Thinking of you as we pass Mount Whitney right now. 14,494 on some, and 14,496 on other, but as you know, we are now in between those two noted elevations. Well, I take a moment to celebrate what got this all started in the mountains. And John, my uncle, thanks for getting this bug started in me with the desire to mountaineer, climb and hike. I know this video could be probably a five or 10 minute version like what you find on YouTube. But again, we're using these episodes as an opportunity to use all of the footage that we captured on our cell phones and just all the little bit of footage that we have, assemble it in one location and have it to enjoy. It's also serving as an opportunity for us to showcase really a little bit more about the mountain and talk a little bit more than some of the other videos do. When we make our way up below Kibo, we stop at about the 15,000 foot mark to have lunch and I catch this great time-lapse photo of the clouds rolling in and around the summit of Kibo Peak, which is Uhuru. You get a little break there and get a chance to see where we're going to head in the morning. We're going to leave about 11.30 tonight, and we should make the summit around sunrise. To make the saddle, you start to pick up other trails. Here's the one that makes its way over from the Mwenzi Karnut as part of the Morongai route, and really got to see some of the northern face routes come to join in with where we've come up from the Morangu route. Behind me and off to my right are actually going to be all of the other routes, uh, Makame, Umbwe, uh, those are all going to be off towards the south and the west face. Now Sarah has actually befriended a group of climbers behind her and is actually helping to carry some of the gear of one of the gals that's uh, struggling a little bit at this altitude. But we do make our way to Kibo Hut and get an opportunity to celebrate our next achievement on day three. We've arrived about an hour ahead of schedule, which is a really, really great feeling. Hey David. So every time we make a camp for the night, we sign in to make sure we're getting a good registry of our achievement for the day and the rangers all know where we are. While it's possible to come to this on many of the different routes, you can camp in your tents. We're actually on the main route of Morangu and have paid for the huts each night. So let's take a look inside of the awesome, awesome Kibo hut. Hey Ali, how are you? Wonderful. So this is our shared quarters for the night. And our oh, popcorn in Swahili. Popcorn, Kilimanjaro. So we're in our bunk room for Kibo Hut, and I just wanted to show something very quickly. I'm actually very proud of our hiking group. Because this is all Sarah's carrying, and this is all I'm carrying, and we've only asked the porters to carry sleeping bags and some change of clothes and um, a tripod. Um, I think we have some medicine and some other things in here, but anyway, we now have our wardrobe change for the higher altitude. This is, we call her Dada Simba. She's the sister line. I call her Mama Simba. And I get the esteemed name of Kaka Simba. <laughs> Kaka Simba. Mm. Brother Lion. Uh -oh. And then the only other thing I'm carrying for extra weight is just this very lightweight solar panel. Okay, well, we're at uh, Kibo at 15,600 feet, and we are sending our good morning message. It's about. Uh, Maybe 7.30 or 7.45 in the morning. Everyone feels happy. <laughs> uh, and we say that we are okay here. <clears throat> and then tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, tonight at 11 p.m., when we 
back up. Then we'll head for Kibo. One foot in front of the other. And when we get there, we will push this custom speech bubble that will say, you've made the summit. My apologies for all of the background noise, but we'll talk about the spot here in a minute. For now, we're going to grab some food and get some sleep. It's an early bedtime. We say goodnight to Mawinzi as the sun's still up. We're going to make it up the Morangu route, and it's going to take from about midnight to 5 in the morning or so to make Gilman's Point, which is the edge of the crater. We'll then have a very short distance but long time to get over to the main summit. On our way up in the morning, we get a chance to stop at the first cave and have our first break. And it is just before sunrise that we do make Gilman Point. I have to really commend Sarah. We left 45 minutes behind every other group. And by the time we got to the summit, there were only about three or four groups of people that we had not passed yet. She just mountain goaded her way up this mountain. But this is the look and pace of what it's going to feel like, no matter how fast you think you're going. You aren't going that fast. Of course, the snows of Kilimanjaro, the glaciers on the summit, they are absolutely diminishing. And it is something where I believe we're going to have a summit with just no snow other than the winter time, and quite frankly, no glaciers uh, in my lifetime. As we make the summit, we of course take the opportunity to celebrate with our wonderful partner, Paul Maseri. Sarah, love you, babe. What a great climb, Paul. Thanks for getting us there. Now, I have a uh, tradition. This uh, football has been with me to many of my summits. It's been to the base camp of Denali, and now it has been to the summit of Kilimanjaro. Paul and I enjoy our celebration dance. Earlier you saw me pushing the button for spot. Now we've pushed the button that says we've reached the summit of Kilimanjaro. Everybody back in the States is going to bed, so we send them to bed with this great news of having made the summit a little after 6 o'clock in the morning. The way down is long and arduous, but very rewarding. And with every step you take, you begin to feel that much better inside. For every 5 to 10 feet of elevation you drop, you feel that much more powerful. Today we're going to make our way back down to Kibo Hut. We're going to have a break, try to eat some food, and then we're going to continue to descend. We want to get down to about the 12,000 foot mark back to Harambo and feel a lot better to get out of the altitude. Again, this is the end of day four. We went for the summit at midnight of day three, reached the summit a little after sunrise on day four. Now we're heading back down to Harambo to get a rest and get up to take day five back through the jungle and get our way out of the forest and out of the Kilimanjaro National Park. Well, little blue monkey took the time to say goodbye to us as we make our way back through the gate at Morangu. What an incredible feeling. We leave behind all of the innocent and clean looking people that are getting ready to make their summit. And for us, we make our way into a very luxurious hotel at the Arusha Coffee Lodge, uh, ready for showers, ready to get clean up. But after our uh, 11 days of safari and five days on the mountain, Sarah, we need a little bit of luxury. So here we are. Now, along the way, you saw me pushing the spot button. We now have tracked and pushed the button multiple times on our trip the button we had to push when we broke down, the button we pushed when we reached the summit. We had fun making shirts. Those who made the summit got a patch. We loved this trip. We hope you'll come and enjoy Tanzania with us. We hope you'll let Panoramic Adventure build a custom itinerary for you and experience this incredible land, whether you want to wave your flag from the summit of Kilimanjaro or enjoy a very unique luxury safari with drivers or a very special self-drive overlanding camping safari. We can put you to something together anywhere in between. So give us a call and let us help. Thanks so much.